So you've got to always be on your game. So, the example being October the 7th. Happens one year ago today in the general calendar. And suddenly a life goes from A to Z. And we've got to really be on our game. We're going to talk about it a little bit today. We're going to also talk about porn. And we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about the importance of um, valuing women, not objectifying them, which is connected, I suppose. And we're also going to talk about October the 7th and how we're going to help bring more tikkunim to this world, more fixing up. Hello. Yes, it's just men. Wrong class. So uh, I just asked our friend here, Mr. Foy. Fear. Fear. Trying to get your name right. We generally try to keep names, you know, like, I don't want to, like, you know, get anyone in trouble or anything, but we're not videoing this one because we're talking about porn. But there's none on the screen, so that's good. Um, it was dark when I came in, but we've got the lights on. Okay, so Rosh Hashanah just was. That means you guys had, like, a nice few days, three days to be exact. Yeah, what's up, Good to see you, man. Let's, gonna, let's, let's make this one, let's make this class worth it, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, I like that energy. So there's been a lot going on personally. Like, as I was saying, October the 7th was a year ago in the general calendar today. I decided to rock this hat. I haven't worn this for a while. And the reason being, it's got the uh, important symbol for the hostages. They should be freed. And also, be kind. We have to really welcome being more kind. You know, this represents an organization which was a big part of this last year where I was able to contribute a lot of, a lot of love and time to helping assisting soldiers, including my own son, because the Just One Chesed, who the hat represents, were, ha suddenly had to switch all their functioning, which was more about an online app, a software for kids and schools to do acts of kindness. They suddenly had to develop a whole HQ, like, you know, army style, where they had a center and they suddenly got equipment and endless donations towards soldiers, Miluim, and general soldiers, and all kinds of people donated thousands of thousands of, of products and equipment that would be good for the soldiers, and it had to be sorted out in this big center. And I got involved in it somewhat. I don't work for them, but I have happened to be able to get in the press in London at that time because they were asking about what's going on here after October the 7th and um, you know it was a whole switcheroo for everybody everything changed like they had to suddenly become from a software kindness operation to hands-on helping the soldiers and they're still doing that till now plus this they're, they're building the software now that things have they haven't calmed down but we've sort of got used to this like it's been a year when you guys weren't here last year and the guys were here, they had to experience a lot of the trauma, especially Simcha's Torah, that crazy day, 7th of October. You know, the sirens were going off. I woke up before the sirens and my whole house was shaking. And there was a lot of guys from Benet World, Benet Akiva, they were all staying in our community because we just spent the night before dancing with them in the shul in Shur and David, having a great time with your predecessors and suddenly, we weren't able to do the usual festivities. And it was a pretty tragic day in every way, beyond words. Can't really put it into words, so I'm not going to even try. Other than the, the trauma of the sirens again and again. My son had to go quickly get into one of my, uh, my daughter's cars and drive up to shul. And before he went off to go into who knows what, he came and got a blessing from me. It was a very emotional moment. It was around, that was around 10.30. And already at that point, davening had pretty much stopped, like praying in Shur David had ended. And we were in this bomb shelter and he came driving up and he had to drive off with her car. We didn't know where, what. He had to pick up his mafaked and this and that. And he drove all around. He ended up having a crash because it was so like chaotic. And his windscreen, like front windscreen got smashed on a bar in a town somewhere. They didn't ever charge him for it, and there was no 
probably got it fixed, so it was in trouble. But he had to leave the car in the middle of Jerusalem. And because it was such a chaotic night when we went afterwards and everyone was very nervous about what was going on, yeah, we, we went to Jerusalem to the bus station area and we picked up the car and it had the window smashed but it hadn't got any ticket, nothing. It was right by the bus station, which usually would have got towed away or a ticket or who knows what. And he now had gone off into, into, at that point he went to Lebanon with his unit and then he went back down to Gaza. And he was only up for Lebanon for a few weeks and then he was in Gaza for about 11 months and then he's been now in the last few weeks in Lebanon or the last week or so and he was part of that famous uh, story that was just in the news now where they uncovered tunnels and armaments. His kid actually was in one of the houses and uncovered the tunnel and they, you know, that was potential October the 7th, God forbid, again in the north that they're planning to do and they discovered brand new weaponry and all kinds of terrible things that they had ready in the tunnels there. And this is the kind of importance of the mission that they're doing right now. So we need to keep in mind that this October the 7th is not over. It's still going on. And we're remembering all the souls who have fallen and this class will be dedicated to them. We're gonna discuss some pretty difficult subjects because it's the 10 days of tshuva and this is a time that I think we can face it. We were going to do the next class, which will be about listening and intently and synergization, which is an important one about intimacy and stuff. But we're going to have to push that for the, when I plan to do it after the Chagin. This week we need to talk about what, what I mentioned already at the beginning, porn, valuing women, and um, how we can fix up this world, how we can make this world a better place, you know? And... Um, I think all of you can contribute like something of your own experience. Obviously, keeping it private. I might say your name when you ask a question or something, but like keep it private. Keep it between us in terms of what you want to ask, what you want to share. You can be open. I'll discuss anything. But I just give you an example. This week, um, I was listening to a podcast. PBD. You ever heard of PBD? Yeah. Patrick Bate David. Yeah? Oh, yeah. He's got a good podcast, Value Entertainment, and he had. The head, the owner of Pornhub. You ever heard of Pornhub? No. no. Good, that's great. Uh, Amazing. What, what is that? Okay. What's Pornhub? Good. So I'm happy none of you are aware. You're, you're just these guys. You come to Israel and you're just like learning all day and, you know, being spiritual and you don't have any idea what Pornhub is. You probably don't even know what Netflix is. Like, you're just pure, you know? I, the reason why I mentioned Netflix in the same sentence because some of the stuff on Netflix is pretty raunchy, I don't know. Yeah, like Orange is the New Black. Yeah, or you could go through the list, I mean... Sex, sex education. Yeah, education. that was... We mentioned that already. We mentioned that. Like, I mean, it's pretty hardcore what's on there, like Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know, there's so much crazy stuff that's pretty hardcore that you could almost call it soft porn, I suppose. But um, somehow it's allowed to be shown on these channels. Um, and streams to our phones and to our homes. But Pornhub is owned now by a Jew. I don't know if you knew that. I don't know what he is. Solomon Friedman. So, I have a model. And my classmate, his father is a lawyer in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah? Solomon Friedman. And he's a rabbi, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so he obviously well, has an interesting rabbi, perspective. Yeah. There's other people like Shmuley Bater who are apparently friends of him who call him out a little bit on this. He generally calls out people, that's his five. But without getting into his story, Rabbi Shmuley, we can get into the concept of porn. I'll take you back. Yeah, go on. Yes, they do. Huh? It's an expiration. I've, I've had an experience where I had an expired, expired condom. I mean, we might as well get into it. Um, with, that, with that story I told you about Prince William's party girl. You remember that? Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't her. She just happened to be there. What did you do? And the, the condom did expire. And it did, didn't. It broke. It broke. So, I wouldn't use expired condoms. Why? Which part did you go? You yeah. got like a kid who's like, wandering around? No, 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 I checked, don't worry. Yeah. You're saying that yeah. he, he thinks that porn is 
No, his his. Uh, if we're going to mention him, we'll, we'll just say uh, his his outlook is that porn is actually not okay, and the only where place where intimacy should be is in the marriage, and he gives you all kinds of tools to enhance that relationship, which maybe some rabbis would think a little bit, you know, on the edge or off the edge, and he wrote that book, such you know, kosher sex and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's but he does, he's not into porn. Now I tell you, we're going to get into porn. Like, I personally grew up in the 90s, where we, our porn was either magazines, and yeah, if you were lucky, you know, in that world, like a CD, or maybe a late night thing, or like eventually we had, you know, eventually they got satellites, so you could somehow access, like it was very hard to get hold of, unless you went out of your way, or you bought a magazine, you had to go to the stores, it was like, it was something that you had to just, I mean it was available, but you had to go out your way, it wasn't on your phone, yeah? It wasn't on the TV, it wasn't on Netflix, it wasn't just anywhere. Now, obviously, Pornhub, what they've done is they've created like a lot of levels that you, I mean, maybe it's easy to access. Personally, I've never tried. Or OnlyFans, I don't know. But this kind of stuff potentially is above 18. It's adult entertainment. That's, that's the first boundary that the general world and this Solomon guy who owns it now is very strong about protecting the fact that it's only meant to be for adult entertainment and it's only meant to be adults involved, yeah? That's the first thing, which means above 18. That's the general consensus, yeah? So that's one thing, just legally, you have to be aware of. There's an 18-year-old level, a consens consenting adults, obviously, and you have to make sure that that's the reality. You, I don't think in America you can get away with saying, I didn't know. That doesn't work, does it? No. No. So, yeah, what do you want to say? Thanks for being patient, brother. Yeah. Um, what is your... Go-to search. <laughs> YouTube, my go-to search. <laughs> no, so personally, I, I, this is where I'm going to get to my personal story. With, when it came to porn, no, no, no. I, at some point, I got very spiritually aware of what sex is. Like, I just, after the Emily girl, the whole story, and after... Huh? What would you say? Oh, I'm going to get to it in a minute. I'm going to answer, answer odd man, odd man. Yeah, so I had, let's first get into the porn of the 90s where I was at. So once again, once you're no longer into that vibe and you're not searching it out, it's not coming away so much, yeah? Now if you go to, like I said, Magaluf or one of these crazy like club towns or clubs or strip bars, you're going to find it, but you had to go out your way, yeah? And thank God big and North London Jew traditional and experiencing some of the downfalls of sex done wrong, where like we just had an example, condom splits, or you break your heart. We spoke about having a broken heart last time. And it can start to make you a bit more sensitive. Do you want the real thing, like a real relationship, and not just whatever, not just a one night stand, or just a thrill. Now I had a friend, this was important, listen to this. Bros, listen, listen. Shema, listen, yeah? This is important. I had a friend, he's a spiritual guy, he lives in, in, in England. And he's not religious as far as I know, but he's just very musical, very spiritual, very special soul. And he once said to me, the masturbation is a bad thing. And I was like, and I was not religious at all. So I was just looking at him like, what do you mean? Like religiously or something? He's like, no, no, I'm not, you know I'm not religious. He said, he said it, it does something to your energy level. Like it takes away certain drive, certain joy, certain energy, life force, vi vitality. And I've decided the last, time period to stop and I feel so much more energized, more strong, more focused. And this was what he told me and he wasn't the kind of guy when he said something I just laughed at him or something. He was like a very special soul when you heard him say, he didn't say much and when he said something you sort of listened, that kind of person. So I actually took him seriously and when I went to, by the time I went to university I actually took it on myself to stop masturbating and I saw my life change. My life changed completely. Now, when I was growing up, it was like the mitzvah was to be James Bond. You know, to like get as many women, spill as much seed, do whatever you want. It was having a party, yeah? But, what? Did you succeed in getting women? Yeah, we mentioned that, Emily. You were in the previous ones? I was six, sorry. Ah, so the previous ones, we talked about the stories. Bunch of stories. But, um, so I, once I got sensitive about masturbation, so you're not really going to go consume porn, you know what I'm saying? What if you have a woman do it for you? Okay, 
That's could yeah, be. That's we're going to talk about that. So no, that's a good question because that's that's important. That's no. Wait a minute. That's called foreplay. And foreplay, foreplay and marriage. There's what foreplay done right in the right way with the right person is is definitely good. It's actually encouraged if you go to the right. That's where you start heading to a little bit towards what Patek was talking about. But you're also, we're not going all the way to him. We're just saying like, as a person and person who does believe in spirituality. Foreplay has its time, its place. It's actually a part of the process if done right. And once again, it doesn't mean just relieving yourself. Because one of the things that happens, if you, just, if you just go all out on foreplay, then generally the, most men, unless you're like on some Viagra or some crazy drug, most men are not going to be able to just keep you know, being able to perform after the foreplay, during the, the, the sex, after the sex. You know, most men, once they've sort of got... Done the, done the mitzvah, or done the deed, or whatever you want to call it, yeah, ejaculate, or however you want to say it, then they're no longer so motivated. That's generally most men. Well, there are some exceptions, I'm sure, and, and maybe there's vitality, vi like Viagra and other stuff you can do, but we're not encouraging it. I'm just saying, like, foreplay is an important part, but it has to be done with a certain self control. And this is something we're going to mention again and again. Based on Stephen Covey, we've been talking about him a lot. He says the key to happiness is self-control. I don't know if you ever heard that. But take that in an intimate setting. If you want a happy wife, you have to be able to have self-control. If you want to have a happy woman, you have to have self-control. That means you're not just letting it all go. If you let it all go, what's happening? She's not going to be satisfied. You get that? Is that clear? Yeah? Women need you to be thinking about them not just about you. This is going to be a theme. And this actually connects into the next point of valuing a woman. What is this woman that you're looking at if, God forbid, you're on porn, which is very common nowadays. Apparently, a large percentage of the internet is porn. Yeah. And now it's even being like, encouraged to be legalized more. It's becoming more accepted in society. And yeah, it's, it's becoming a part of like, a career for women and men. And it's not just a man thing. It's both apparently women also somehow have some connection to it, but one of the things we're going to leave to the women's intimacy like class, really their class is going to be about them developing value for themselves. That means them developing the self-esteem and, the, and the value that they have within themselves to not, to not create a situation where they're just going to become what you guys would call either loose or desperate or all these kind of things. That's going to be their job to develop that self-esteem and value and now we'll discuss that with the other with the women class not it's not for us to discuss for us it's to discuss how do we value them yeah a woman is not just an object yeah she's just not someone like because if we're going to go there then just you guys actually will be tested in this unlike previous generations or my time when i was your age i didn't have this test but you will be tested with sex objects sex dolls you know, it only fact, it's like much more intensely available than it was in my time, the stimulation. And so therefore, if it's just about the object, so you can just remove all the personality, all the intimacy in terms of relationship and all the responsibility, and you don't need a woman like the way classically we understand it, because you can find other ways, and it's coming. It's going to be coming very soon in, a, in all kinds of technological things that hopefully, I hope it won't come, but it's, it's probably much inevitable in terms of the commercial interest. We can see it's a massive business. Uh, what was the most successful business during Corona, other than the masks and the vaccines? Amazon. Yeah, Pornhub. Yeah. That too. That as well. So that went, yeah. had massive... Had massive business. It's like it's professionally produced porn, yeah, on videos and YouTube style, but porn. It can also be home studio, and the point is, it's become. It's become. I'm not encouraging it here. The point is that it's become a reality, and we have to be open to discuss reality. When I was in yeshiva, when I went up to a rabbi uh, in a program, and I said, you know, I'm having challenges with girls. The rabbi there said to me, just go learn more Talmud. Yeah, which that didn't work. But that was his answer to me. Like, he wasn't willing to address it so much. He wasn't willing to discuss it. Now, thank God I didn't just stay with that. Some people, what they do when they get a crap answer from a rabbi, which was a crap answer, excuse my language, but it was, 
They go, bad answer from a rabbi, they just say, that's my excuse now. He, the rabbi gave me a crap answer, so now I have an excuse for the rest of my life to ignore rabbis. A lot of people do that. Yeah, I do that. What I did is I said, okay, I hear you, rabbi, thank you. I went to another few friends of mine, a few people that I looked up to, role models, and we actually discussed it. We learned about what does the Torah actually say about this whole area. I, I became a little bit of a, not an expert in it, but enough to be able to help me deal with those challenges of that time. I'll give you an example. I was on a plane, and I was still a good-looking dude back then. Yeah, not, you know, things changed, but I was, you know, that in those, in those days. And a girl, like, hit me on the plane, and she gave me a number, and, like, I really wanted to come back to here and meet up with her. And, you, you know, the whole religious thing is, oh, it would be a shidduch or whatever. But it wasn't. Yeah, it was just going to be, like, whatever it was going to be. And my friend at that time was like, I don't know. I don't see that going in a good direction right now where you're at. And thank God I listened to him because within a few months I found my wife. And it, this would have distracted me big time. She wasn't ugly. She was a beautiful blonde girl. It would have distracted me. Another example, I went back home and I had this intense desire to reconnect to my ex-girlfriend. The one I mentioned last time, the heartbreaker. Yeah? So I really wanted to reconnect her. But I was like, no, but I'm going to do it like show me the gear. I'm going to do it like religiously. I'm going to do it like the right way now. It would have been a disaster. And I had another friend who stopped me at that time. I always had the right people at the right time. Another story at university, there was this really hot girl in the Hello House. And I was just like, you know what? I think she's the one. I'm going to hook up with her. And I was telling my boys, yeah, I found this girl. I'm going to get with her tonight. This is it. She sang at this club. And she was so like turning me on her singing and stuff. And I even played the guitar for her. So I was like involved. And I was like, this is it. And just as I was about to hit on her, some guy from Aisha Torah turned up, one of our old friends, and he just wouldn't get out, get out of the way. He was just there all the time. And so then, yeah, so I was just, it cooled me down. By the end of the night, I actually realized I'm actually not so into her, actually. Now, like, I'm cooled off a little bit. That's another thing. When you get really intense about a girl, you can cool yourself off. One guy once told me, I, I, as part of being working in these programs, I had a studio, music studio. And one of the guys there was getting hit on by a bunch of girls from another program, and he was going to meet up with them. And then he started, what? Drumming. So I went to the studio, I went, I had a drum kit. Started drumming, I gave it to this, the program, and he's drumming away. And after about three, four hours, he just blew them off. He wasn't interested anymore, because the energy, the flow, the outlet that you need, that you often think needs to be sexually expressed, can be channeled in other ways. And this is going to be useful also in marriage, by the way. Don't think just because you're married, or you've got this woman who's supposedly going out with you or committed to you, and you think that she's just going to be all the time available. That's just not how it is. If you've paid any attention to any of the stuff, the real stuff about what's going on out there, women are not just there for when we feel like it. That's, I'm just telling you that. So therefore, you need to have lots of outlets and not think that sex is an outlet for when you're feeling that way. You have to find other ways of channeling that energy. And for me, personally, it's always been more about being more creative. So one of the things I did when I was feeling a bit tested in marriage, I would go out for a walk or I'm, I'm writing a book right now about souls, or like find some creative outlet. And I'm, I'm an older guy and I'm still being tested in this way, and you've got to find creative outlets. Now, when you're alone with the phone, you've got big problems, yeah? Because it's, it, the easiest option is, to, as our boy over there said, just go to the porn, I'll give you the link. It's, it's, tr it's very accessible. But the difference, what I'm trying to help you understand, and this is where this, with the 10 days of tuba, that it does affect you. As I said from my secular friend, nothing to do with religion. It takes away your vitality to just constantly give in to that feeling. Ha developing self-control will develop self-control for everything in life. Yeah? I'm not always there, personally. But, so we can be human about it. But the more you have self-control with how you speak, how you treat a woman, how you value her, and especially with intimacy, it will upgrade your experience a million times, infinitely times. This is important to know that. Like, a lot of people, like, they, they, get, they go the other way around. Like, why can't you just give me what I want? Why can't you just give my needs and everything will be cool? But it, it, what it does, it makes a woman lose respect for us. Like the women around here in this program, if you treat them like objects, they'll lose respect for you. I said, I said if, it's true. Some girls like to be treated like shit. Wait a minute, we'll get to that. We'll, he's, no, it's a good point, what he said. Very valid. No, very valid, very valid. There are some women and it's unfortunate. And that's why I said it's the other class. They're going to have to 
and hopefully or maybe some therapy or whatever it is to help them grow out of that state because it can lead to a lot of damage for them personally. But like, and also the people they, they bring down with them with that journey. But the point is that each of us have to be face facts that this is a challenge. This is not like going away anywhere. As I said, there's no real solution, like no easy way out of just marriage or one girlfriend who you can just think you can get what you need or porn. You say oh, porn's a solution, but the problem is with porn, the dopamine, the experience you're getting initially will never be enough. It's like a drug. Because I've worked in rehab and I've seen sex, sex, addiction, sex addi addiction, it's a real issue. And if it, it starts off at a certain level where you are into a certain level porn, and then it, God forbid, then it can go to higher and higher levels of, and what I'm saying is like distortion of what sex is. It gets more and more extreme till we see there's a whole massive child traffic, trafficking world going on because that's where a lot of people have fallen to, where they need to have child porn or even worse, act it out. And this can really destroy someone's life. Yeah. You've been adult for a musical kind of human trafficking. Yeah, there is a, a overlap sometimes. No, it's like, um, it's, yeah. like uh, it's like they bring these women from like, they don't bring them to the day, they, they tell them in whatever country they're coming from. So yeah. Very, very poor country. Like this North Korea, Korea, for example. Yeah, you could get a job in yeah. the US and they'd be highly paid in the US or whatever, and they come and their job is to basically just like, like yeah, so that is, uh, unfortunately, a lot of porn apparently is that. I don't know all the exact figures and details, but that's one of the things Pornhub are trying to say they're not like, they're not like that, that they're only using people over 18. But like, if you listen to the podcast of Patrick B. David, it's very hard for this Solomon dude to prove exactly how clear it is for sure, 100%, that it's not some distortion to that. Like you're saying, it's someone who was trained at a young age to do this, or even abused or forced to do it. And there's, there's movies about it. It's, been, it's, it's being, thank God, now undercut. It's being, it was very undercover at one point. Now it's all being revealed how much child trafficking, how much the celebs, the people we thought, like P. Diddy and all these people, how much they're with their, you know, like I, one of the boys I hanged out with was a guy called Shine. Yeah? Shine was one of P. Diddy's guys. He, worked, he was signed up with Bad Boys Records. Yeah? Now, Shine, Shine came to Israel and tried to get religious. Yeah? So if you, look up, if you look up New York Times, write Shine, Ellie Goldsmith, you'll see I've come up on the front cover with Shine. Maybe not my picture, but the article. And there's also in the Rolling Stones as well, a re more recent one, because they, they did a whole hit job on him. And I somehow got included in it. I didn't want to say negative things about Shine, but they did. They sort of had a way of doing it. But he, Shine was in that world. And he ended up being the full guy and ended up in prison for 10 years. And he tried to be Jewish. It wasn't so clear. And then he ended up as probably going to become the PM of Belize. That's probably where he's at right now. But Belize. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is that P. P Diddy's whole scene and his whole vibe was that whole world of, of ch child, child trafficking or alleged, at least. And, you know, the whole superstar world is been shown to be what it is, which is corrupt, which is basically porn fallen, fallen into the hands of the powerful and being used, you know, that kind of drive for their own benefit and even worse, to be used as a power tool to rule over people. That's another thing. One rule you should never do is ever share selfies of yourself, yeah, online, ever. Never show, as they call it, D.I.K. pics or other kinds from her side. Never, ever share it online, ever. Because once it's out there, everything's hackable, everything can be used against you by gangsters and mafia. And you wear that, that's why you don't put your face in the picture. It's to, it, no, there's ways they can traffic, they can still figure out a way to, to, they can Photoshop it, they can do all kinds of stuff now. It's basically just stay away from the dark web, stay away from these places which can be used against your success in life, your fulfillment in life. Like, <laughs> And it's not going to get you a lady to show that kind of stuff. That's not how, we're, how it really works. As I said already, it's about face to face. That was how we started this whole thing. It's about initiating relationships. It's not about, you know, pictures of your body. Yeah. So we have to be aware of what's been going on in these bunch of years of showing how dark and dirty that whole world is. 
even the Hollywood world, Jeffrey Epstein, and the whole thing, Hashem Shemreinu, we are heading towards right now Yom Kippur, which is the opposite. Yom Kippur, we have an opportunity to fix up this whole area. Just by hearing the, the Kol Nidra, and they walk around with the Torah, or Azur, and the Sadiq, Yishrael, and Simcha, just hearing that Pasuk being said, we're walking around the shul, that already is part of fixing up the bris. We just had Shob for us, that's another way of fixing up the bris. There's all kinds of spiritualities that are going on on Yom Kippur. If you look into the, the rules of Yom Kippur, how you should sleep, you shouldn't spill seed that night, you have to be very careful. It's, it's deciding the whole year to come. Like these are things to Kunim that need to be worked on, fixed up. Now October the 7th, what was the main thing that the, the, uh, the terrorists were doing to the women? They were raping them, yeah? And I think they raped even children and men. That's what I heard, how bad it was. So we know our enemies are taking this whole energy and using it in an abusive, disgusting way. So the Jewish people, we don't do that, yeah? We don't go rape them. The soldiers are very, very careful. Like the other day, one of my friends who has a daughter in the army, she was asked, even though she's, this is not her job, she was asked to help arrest some Arabs who were terrorists, women, because they didn't have enough men on duty, so they called her in, even though she's a gun lady, like uh, the big guns, you know, the, the missiles and launcher things. She, she's a technical person on that. They, they pulled her in to help with a job to arrest some Arab ladies, and it, thank God it all worked out smoothly, and I even saw a picture of her with the Arab ladies in the car, arrested. But the point was, the, the, the army is very careful, goes out of its way to bring in women when it gets to that kind of scenario where women terrorists are involved because we're not into doing anything to the other, our enemies. We're not into abusing them or raping them or anything like that. That's not our army. We're held to a better level. So this is, you have to understand that the world's looking at us to be the moral light and therefore porn and sex trafficking or anything which starts to become illegal is out of bounds. You know, rape is something we are the opposite. So one of the ways you have to understand on a spiritual level, if you get to the spirituality behind it, that right now, who has the holiest place on earth? Who's, who's got their, their Arabs. Arabs? What does it look like, honestly? Yeah, but what does it look like to you? Okay, but now use your imagination. No. <laughs> It's like the end of a man. They, their whole thing is they say that they're the bris. They've got the covenant. They hold that they're the people. Of, of, yeah, they're the people. And that's what they're doing when they're raping our people. They're saying that they rule over us in the sexual way. That's why it's part of their religion, the ones who are terrorists. Not all of the religion, because well, thank God not all Muslims are like that. But um, the terrorist aspects, they want to sh- they rule over us in terms of destroying our holiness, destroying us in that, in a sexual way. And you see it's happening also in America through the woke the politics. They also want to destroy sexuality, take away the, the clarity of a man and woman. They want to make it fluid and everything. So the idea is that we can also win the war, not just by having a good army, but also win the war by being spiritually alive and having an awareness that this is a spiritual battle going on amongst all of us. It's not just, it's not your own personal thing. It's actually a larger picture. Sorry to scare you that way, but it's a true thing. Like the way we'll truly win this war is that we are living up to the level of morality that we're capable of as B'nai Israel, as the Jewish people. And we can be leaders in demonstrating to the world family values. So what happened with me? How did I get out of that? So I told you my friend, but then basically I went to university and I stopped, I stopped masturbating, I stopped doing any of that, and my life changed. Like, the energy I had, the vitality, my sensitivity to being a good person and being more spiritually alive changed. Everything flipped out once I controlled this area. And remember, I didn't have a rabbi telling me. There was no rabbi lecturing me about this. I didn't have your program. I was no one to talk to. And I, even when I told you I went to Israel, they told me to learn more Talmud. Which truth is, if you learn enough Talmud, you eventually find some of the clarity there. But you'd have to really learn a lot to get to those points which talk about this area. And at that point, I wasn't anywhere near that. So that wasn't so helpful. So I had to find people to speak to about this area so I could start getting a bit out of myself, be a bit more objective through other people's advice who are healthy and happily married or happily focus in that way and it was it was it was a journey to get this and it's still a journey till now 
And as I said, there's certain times a year, Yom Kippur, where you're going to get the help spiritually. That, you know, God's not just going to throw you into the, into the ocean and say, now swim. And there's like no, no boat, there's no life jacket, there's no methodology. You know, in the middle of the ocean, you've got to have a, a way to get out of this dangerous waters that we're all facing in this generation with this over focus on sex and dopamine and, and masturbation and all this kind of stuff. You have to be able to get to a point where you're rising above it. Like you, you have ability to get through these oceans, to keep swimming, to keep afloat, to keep... Because you understand what happens once you give in fully and you can end up... And I've been in these rehabs with sex addicts. Their life's ruined. Like they're ruining, not completely, because there's always a way of recovery. There's always a way to go to heal. But it's a long journey. And one of the things is if a person's had abuse in their life, they have... They all have not just that, there are sexually trans transmitted diseases, which is a definitely a big consideration. But there's also, you, you, if you've had abuse or something that happened to you in your life, you have to face it. Because it will affect your marriage, it will affect your later on in life. It, it, there's no, you can't, like one of my guys I listened to, a guy called Lewis House, he was molested when he was a kid, and he didn't face it for a long time. Once he started facing it, it actually became his tool to heal, and not just himself, but others. It became a power that he was now, once, once he talked it out and was public about it and real about it, he was able to be in control of the abuse rather than the abuse controlling him. And this is a big like, transition that we can all make in this generation. Be aware that, that with women, if you're not valuing them, they might feel, feel, and it's quite this generation, where they might feel they're being abused by you on some level. And you don't want that accusation. Yeah? Nobody wants to go through that. Like, I worked late night at schools. I had a lot of boundaries when I was in all the dorms and stuff with the boys. They said, come one boy who I knew he was, he was an orphan and he, or he was adopted and gone through, had a journey in life and probably had had some abuse. I knew with him, when he said to me, come sit on my bed, let's talk, Rabbi. No. <laughs> I'll sit on this chair over here, the other side of the room, the door's open. Like, I didn't make it obvious, but I kept my boundaries. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing you have to realize with women as well. Like, if you're going to be sexually focused, you don't know what it could lead to. If, if it's not done with the right boundaries, the right consent, it's consensual experience, and there's a level of trust. Like, it's not all party. Like, the, the movies and the celeb world make it look like it's all fun. But look what they're doing behind the scenes, the ones who are running all that whole industry. What's going on over there? So you're going to believe them to guide you in how to live sexually? They're going to be your guides. When Look what they do to kids, or look what they do to tens and hundreds of women who come through their door because they have power. Like, so you're going to take them as the role models? James Bond is going to be a role model when, look, look how he never gets married, he never sells down, never has any responsibilities. You know, it's, he's, not the, he's not the role model. I thought it was, and I still, there's an aspect of James Bond, like the sort of confidence, there's something good you can take it out of as being a man and being confident, but not to the point where you just, every night another lady and you know, it's just this whole sexual thing. Like, there has to be more to the experience than just the sexual experience. Otherwise, it's just very empty at some point. That was, for me, the main indicator that I was on the wrong path. It's how empty I felt. I don't know if you ever felt that. But if you're with a woman, you think, wow, I got what I wanted, but I'm feeling so empty afterwards. What does, how does that work? That feeling of emptiness, is, is, and you can't really fill it with anything. That's the whole idea of the drug world. You, have the, you create this space inside of you, so you keep needing to feed it and fill it, and fill it up the space until more and more, until you get more engaged in the sex or the drugs or the rock and roll, whatever it is, and you know, the gambling, whatever it is. And the whole recovery world now has to teach you to fill that space without doing the addiction and to give you a higher power that's going to help you out of this because it's such a powerful energy, it's such a powerful draw. Look, everyone knows how powerful it is because, I, as I said, yeah, these industries are the biggest money makers. Yeah? They're making the most money and they're getting the most eyeballs. So it's obviously a power. But just because the general world is... Just like, just like right now, Israel is not listening to the general world with a war. If they were, we'd, we would not be in Lebanon. Yeah? And what would be? What my son discovered up there with his unit a whole 
tunnel filled with equipment to make another October the 7th. And we're listening to the world. Yes, America. Yes, France. Yes, Western countries who are meant to be our friends. We'll listen to you. And we'll just listen to you. And what will happen, like happened October the 7th, God forbid. They'll come in. They'll go through the tunnels. They'll have even better equipment than Hamas did. Much more organized army. And they won't just rape. They'll kill. They'll take over territory. It would have been a nightmare. Instead, what's happening, we're going in there and we're preventing this from ever happening again. But that's because we're not listening to the world. So the world is not a proof that something's right or wrong. We have, we have our own, thank God, guidance of what's right and wrong. And the more the Jewish people are listening to it, the better off we are. We have our own moral guide. I mean, you're in a place that says, yeah, Jewish peoplehood, yeah? You read it to me. An informed and active sense of belonging to the Jewish people. We have to understand that even though we're alami, meaning we're global, that we come from the world and we have respect and appreciation for what the world's given us in this time period, they've been much more welcoming to our people and, and we've been able to, been to, live, to live in peace somewhat. But we can't take their value system, we can't how to build Israel. So, so too with the morality, we have to establish a more elevated approach to this. And I think that all of you deep down know that's true. And deep down know that you'll get more fulfillment if you can make real relationships. So we're gonna, in the future classes, get more into practical steps. But the concept of porn and not valuing a woman, there does need to be some sort of tshuva, some sort of fix, some sort of tikkun olam for our people. The, we don't just have to, just because it's on our phone and everyone else seems to be into Netflix, everyone else seems to be into this, all the trends, we don't just have to follow trends. We can create our own budget and it's really going to have to be up to your own personal choice on some level, even though we will be influenced by what's going on around us, but it's going to have to come from our own personal choice. I chose it myself and no, no one persuaded me. I, no one gave me information other than a few friends here and there. You have to make the choice and you have to be honest with yourself and honest with the person if you're already in a relationship. You have to be honest with this person. How is it affecting her? She's also a person. She's also got feelings. She's also got needs. And the more we understand that this person needs to be valued, this woman has a value. A woman is, in the Jewish world is the most you know, high level. She's, she's already made in God's will. That's the blessing they say. We say we're not made like a woman. They say, I'm made in God's will, in their blessing in the morning. Because they're already in tune with what God wants. That's why, why are women always giving men a hard time? Because they're already naturally in tune to what God wants, what we're here for. That's where women are at. They're like, they're like a different level of morality than most people, generally. Now you're saying there are some who are not like that. That was a good question you had, yeah? Brother, you said there are a bunch of women who are not who are going to give in and are going to do whatever. You all said that, yeah? Yeah, those are the best. Yeah, exactly. So they make it easy for us to live the other way. But as I'm saying, over time, let's be honest, would you want to marry that woman? Let's be honest. If you know she's got a high count, body count, let's say, yeah? Do you want to marry that woman? you want to have children with that woman? And she might be still be doing it? Well, the thing and she is, might have who knows what other issues that come from yeah, it. But like, we can't judge them really by the past. That's true. But you know, the I, I feel for me personally, like yeah, I changed. So lower body count, it's definitely more like, appealing. It's more appealing. So what what's appealing about it? Because the experience they have. No, because they don't have experience. Oh, when they don't have a body count. No, we have a low body count. Oh, you prefer that? Yeah, obviously, because it's more like a prize. Like, they don't just get with. Yeah, my wife was a virgin, and this was a miracle, because she was dancing in some of the hottest clubs in London, like there's a club there called Strawberry Moon, I, I could list all the names, and she wasn't dressed the most sneersly, like let's be honest, and it was a miracle, she went to Cuba on one of these holidays, it was a miracle again and again and again, that she managed to protect herself as a woman, she's very strong, and she had value for herself, even in the secular world, she was more traditional, but she had value for herself. And that's, that attracted me to her more than all the women that I could easily get. Because she had value. She valued herself. And that, that's what drew me to her. The value, the self-esteem and the value that she had for her and who she wanted to be was something she really wanted it to be a special experience. She didn't want it to just be whatever. She wasn't just sex drive. Like sex education, that, that Netflix thing. 
makes it like just like it's just like this drive and you just got to deal with it but there's it's, it's obviously much more than that if all of humanity is created through this drive it can't be and the continuations dependent upon it it can't just be some physical chemicals that's all it is that would be a very like sad reality if that's all humanity is about just a bunch of chemicals bumping around a bunch of monkeys bumping into each other you know it, it, i hope I hope you'll believe more than that. There's more going on. You know, there's a human being, there's a soul, there's, there's emotions, there's, there's values, there's, there's a future, there's a hope, there's a destiny, there's, there's something bigger. That's what we came to Israel. We're not just in Israel because our parents sent us. There's something deep over here, yeah? So that for me was a big transition. And that, that, that's when I switched off porn completely, TV even. I, start, I had a complete... Like, what do they call it? Like when you, yeah, detox from TV. Okay. I didn't have phones back then, but I had a detox. I mean, I had mobile phones, but as I said, I lost mine, so I didn't have all the numbers. I had a detox, and it was for a few years, and once again, it wasn't religiously motivated. It was just a healthy lifestyle. And the detox did me a lot of good, because I started thinking for myself. I had, as I said, I had more energy. I felt I was more attractive as well, because I had much more energy. I'm not just sharing it with anyone. I have value for myself also. Who would I share this? this what, do you, what do you think this, this, this seed that's coming out of a man is? It's not just like just some party juice, yeah? It's, it's, a, it's coming from your brain, from your soul. It's coming through your body into... It has a power there. There's a spiritual energy to it. It's not just whatever. People think it's just like some, like, some smelly stuff. No, it's, it, it can create life. It has souls within it. Every time it comes down, it has souls. And now the souls are going nowhere. You don't want to see what it says in our holy books about what happens to those souls that go nowhere, what it creates, all kinds of demonic forces, God forbid, and the ability for terrorists, God forbid, to have power over us has a lot to do with that. So we're actually in a war when we understand what this is, but also just on a personal level, there's a tremendous energy there. And you can ask anyone in UFC or any other guys, the big fighters, the ones who are really successful, big, the famous heavy, heavy you know, weight success stories, the ones who really lasted in that position, is because they had self-control in this area. They, every big athlete knows you have to have self-control in this area if you really want to dominate the sport. You really want to dominate in business. You have to have self-control because all the people that sell out and just play around is catching up on all of them now. Or they're working for the devil, the other side, so the only reason they've got success is because they sold their soul, literally, like P. Diddy, or they're, or they're like, they're, they've been, they're being controlled by other people because they've got, they've got them, they've got power on them because they've been, they've done this with this person, that with this person, they've lost power of their life because of this intimate, intimate energy used wrong. And we, we hear it all day in the news, no? All these people who are now vulnerable and will be held accountable now. That's the amazing thing, everyone's being held accountable. No one's being protected anymore. So we're in a different time. So you, for your own just personal benefit, it's worth working on this area, not just being subjugated by this physical need and this drive. You, you want to conquer it on some level. Yeah. Um, all these people, like, um, like the ones in the 70s, yeah. embarrassed about these, not the child poor ones. Sure. Obviously they should be embarrassed and criminalized about that. Sure. But when they're like just cheating on their wife or having loads of girlfriends and this, that, and the other. Well, you're saying that as, like, as if they should be embarrassed. Like if you, you can still have value for yourself and still sleep with No, oh, so there is, there is a whole, like, like I grew up in North London, Jewish world, yeah? Which you probably do also, yeah? yeah? So there, there's like a whole society, a secular society, or modern Orthodox, where you can sort of live that way, and it doesn't seem to ever backfire. Like meaning these people have nice homes, their marriages somehow get through it, or whatever, or it didn't, doesn't affect their marriage, they get married later. No, I'm not saying Meaning they have good lives, seemingly, as a secular person, and it doesn't seem to not be in control of that area. Like I asked my friend the other day, he's not able to, master, uh, to be with his wife right now because she had a disease you know, that wouldn't allow it. So he says he goes and masturbates in the shower when he feels the need because he can't be with her. So he's not going to go with other women, but it will just release, like, you know, like listen to Rogan. So there's nothing wrong releasing, he's all into it, yeah? I'm, I'm, there's obviously levels of understanding of what 
this energy is and how to use it. And Rogan's a very successful person. But once again, he's not Jewish, so maybe he doesn't have the soul level that we have in terms of the sensitivity to it. But it, it's all about your own personal levels of sensitivity to spirituality. Because if you look at, for example, Yom Kippur, which every Jew somewhat pays tribute to, everyone goes to shul pretty much and fasts pretty much. It's the day. There's a reason to that because it's connected to a very deep part of the Jewish soul that has an understanding. For example, one of the things you're not allowed to do on Yom Kippur is sleep with your wife. Yeah, and there's a lot of rules around that on Yom Kippur. You can't definitely sleep with anyone else. So there's, and even what we read on Yom Kippur about Arias, you know, messed up relationships with women and all these other things that go on. We read about it on Yom Kippur. We know that there's an essential spirituality that exists within us that has a level that's, that's elevated. That wasn't what I was saying. So I'm saying, yeah. like, uh, let's say I go around with fucking people when I people yeah. find out I don't care because I have enough value in myself but I'm not going to go sleep with someone around them. But, yeah, so you're going to choose uh, carefully. Yeah, but that's that's the North London world. Yeah, like, I'm saying, like, it's selective. Still it's selective. It's, you're, you're with someone whose quality... But let, we didn't talk about this so much, but when you're with a woman, what are you doing? We'll get into a bit more down the road. Now, I think next, week, next time we meet, we'll talk about it more. It's one of the things we'll discuss. Remind me. The idea that, of downloading your DAS, if you know what that means. You're, like, if you ever... I'm, I'm all the time working on marketing. Like, I've, I work in the music business. We've got Nissan Black, by the way, if anyone wants to come. Speaking at Shirt David in a frat. He's speaking Wednesday night, the rap artist I work with. And I'm always working with all kinds of people and... You know, you have to download all the time pictures and schedules and you're constantly downloading to your, to your, from, your, from your phone or from online, you're down from the cloud, you're downloading to the, to the hard drive. So this is when you're with a woman, you're downloading your energy, your das, your mind, your personality into this lady. And it has an effect on her, it has an effect on you. You both affect each other in a deep way. That's really what's happening. There's a downloading of it. It's called das. That, yeah, knowledge. It's a moment of knowledge. That's what the Torah calls it. Knowledge, intimacy. I'm getting to know someone in the most intimate way. So the only problem is if you're going around doing this all the time, even if you can do it like you're saying, the more like secular, more orthodox way, where you feel, I don't know if more agree with it, but even secular, where you don't feel like it's taking away anything from you, but something did happen on a, in a profound way. Of all the different things I'm explaining, there's a profound connection take place with this person. And you have to really look at, is this person who I want to have that profound experience with? This is the problem. It's been so cheapened and made, made into something that's so like just purely physical, purely animal, that we've lost the understanding for what a profound power it is. Surely you can still understand something and then disconnect from it and compartmentalize your feelings. For example, let's say... Like, that's a very English way of doing things, but yeah, uh, I understand. Let, let, you yeah. Know, let's say I go around like fucking yeah. whatever, and I'm, but I'm also very spiritual. Like, I'm going to say, okay, well, I understand that, but also I don't care so much, and I'm going to put that... Well, I, I, have, I had a lot of friends over the years who speak... They're very clever guys, cool guys, successful guys. They look great. They look like they've got the best lives. And they all try to do that on some level, where they'd, like, be spiritual, like, put fill in on once in a while, and go to shul, and, like, have a connection. And now with the war, they're maybe even more connected. But then... They're also not married, still having fun, still sleeping around or whatever. And they're living in this dichotomy of two different like, realities. And it, I see with them, it, until they make a choice and really focus, they're not fully grown. It's like it, you have to be all in, in at some point. Yeah? At some point you've got to say you have to say, I'm going to be all in. I mean, all in means all in. That's part of the commitment. Yeah? It's like anything in life. If you're really going to do it well, marriage, a relationship with a woman, if you're not all in, you're going to try half ass it, excuse my language. It's going to be half ass back. You're only going to get half the ass, if you know what I'm saying. I'm being rude, but I'm saying it to make a point. That you're not going to get the full lady. You're not going to get the full experience. You're not going to get the full development of soul that, um, that you have potential to develop with this person. And therefore, you're never really tapping in fully to what intimacy is. So you're missing out on something very profound. And it will affect all the other things that you're managing to somehow keep in check, because you're still doing the Jewish stuff, but it's not the full all-in experience. So that's one of the challenges which our generation has, we're being very much, it's, it's an intense conversation, but we're, our focus is being taken away from us. It's a war for focus. And intimacy is, is one of the most profound ways of, of developing that focus and gauging your focus in life. 
Like I just told you, the athletes, they're focused in this area. So they can become supremely successful. And some of them will take that with them for the rest of their life. And say, wait a minute, I felt so good by eating healthy, sleeping healthy, women healthy, everything healthy. The value goes up as you value yourself. The self-esteem goes up as you develop more and more self-control. The higher the level of self-control, the higher level of self-esteem, the higher level of happiness. Yeah, if I was really in control of myself, I'd be a much happier person. I'll give you an example. Last night I was lying in bed, I'd just fasted. Um, I'd drunk two cups of coffee, it was a mistake. I should only have one. And now I was buzzing. My wife, she wasn't in the mood for me to like, for bring her party to pass a certain point. So I'm lying there, nothing's going on in the world. It happens once in a while. Usually I've got events, I've got things, bookings, this, that. Nothing going on. Empty. Phone's empty. My sons are traveling in Ukraine. My other son's out of Lebanon. My, my other son's managed to get through the border, so they're good. Yeah, they're now in Hungary. Yeah, the other son's, other son's in his, on his way to his base. Everything's cool. Nothing extreme. No, no reason. Like, everything's more calm. Maybe I need to just process everything. Maybe that's why I'm up. Maybe I need to focus. Now, what the natural thing is to take the phone and just flick. And just do mindfulness, uh, mind, mind numbingly nothing. Not mindfulness, the opposite. Just do not, nothing, just flick. Check out the Facebook feed if you're into Facebook, check out the TikTok feed, whatever it is, whatever your thing is. And just be there, going like this. And I was flicking, flicking, and I was just like, this is so bad. And I, then I felt by, I must have started around one ish, and I was somewhat still doing it by two, two ish at that point. And I'd found some somewhat things to do that were meaningful. And I was getting to a point where it was just becoming nonsense. So I said, I'm not going to fall asleep if I just keep doing this. I have to turn it off. And I have to just put it away. And the next day I woke up and I was like, wait a minute. What happened to all my own advice that I've given you guys about being creative? What happened to me writing my book? So I immediately got out my, my app that I write my book on. And I started writing again. And I said, next time I'm in that position, I'm going to write something. Next time I'm in that position, I'm going to create something. I'm going to be artistic. I'm going to brainwave and write down or make a post or do something, write to someone I haven't written for a while who's in a different time zone and reach out to them. I'm going to do something positive. I'm not just going to allow this phone to just take a few hours of my life for nothing. And that, that's what I'm saying, like, with the whole drive. And that, thank God I didn't even have an inclination to go on Pornhub or any of that stuff. Thank God, like, I've been away from it long enough that it, what happens, the more you, like, develop self-control, the easier it is to stop it. You, you, you just have your own boundaries, your own filters. Even better if you have filters as well, helping you if you're having a hard time. But you have your own filters. But if you don't develop any of this, then you're just held captured by this phone. And we're all going to have to deal with that. And that is called Pizarre. Pizarre is like a spreading of your seed, spreading of your focus. It's, it's, it's one of the main ways that if we're at war, the, the way we're going to win the war is with supreme focus. Just to end off again with October the 7th, how are we going to win this war? How are we going to take the legacy of all the fallen ones? By being more focused on who we are. We're going to win this war by being the best we can be. My son gave 100, 100% in Lebanon. 100%. If he didn't, he might not be here. He went through miracles that happened to her, the unit of Egos and other units that lost people. He went through miracles. Him and his unit, they found things, they, they were saved from things. I don't know all the details, I haven't seen him, we're seeing him tomorrow, Baz Hashem. But the idea, and then he's going back in, I think, to Lebanon. Not, he's not allowed to come home yet. But the idea is that the only way we're going to win this war is with extreme focus. And it's not just the people on the front line, it's us as well. You want to win the war as being a Jew and being the best you can be, to be happy, to be fulfilled. You're going to have to use this program to its max. That means being as focused as you can while you're here. Because you're going to have people like me coming through this door, or people maybe even better than me, like Shmuller Fly, or some of these real high souls you've got working here, and you can just see them as nudniks, or someone who's taking away from the fun you're having, or you can see them as someone who's giving you something, their life experience, their journey, there's so much to learn from. Like we said last time, you can come away with some of your goals fulfilled, you're going to learn Hebrew better, that means focus, you're not going to learn Hebrew unfocused. You want to master something, you have to be focused. So in order to become excellent, become undeniable at what you are and what you're here for, the more focus you have, the more you stay away from things like porn, and the more you value what a woman is, because she, what she wants most is your focus. That's all she really wants. 
to understand that focus, that dedication, that love, that's what she's asking for. You get that down, you have fulfillment in marriage you have, or relationships, you have fulfillment in your personal self-esteem. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different lifestyle and it's really a big key to success in our generation more than you realize because you'll become excellent at things. You're always going to be that much more focused in business, that much more focused in schooling, that more, more focused in relationships. Everything will go up at another level. And it really all connects in with intimacy is a very powerful way of gauging it and developing it. And uh, the, you have to understand there's a whole industry out there trying to take you away from this. It's a war. It's a war with the wokesters. It's a war with the internet. It's a war with the, our neighbors. It's a war, man. It's a war with ourselves. And, it's, it's, and we are going to win it. Ultimately, the good news is we're going to win. We're not going to stay in this like, broken feeling of like, I, I can never overcome this. We will win it. Like, people have gone through rehab with the most crazy, crazy addictions, and then they've become superstars in helping other people. And they never went back to that lifestyle. Yeah, we'll end off with your question, and that'll be the end of the session. Uh, personally, um, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I think that's yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, listen, are there certain things that are better in my life? Yeah, but I mean, I don't know, like, I definitely don't, like, I, you know, the urge to do all these, like, sexual yeah. things and whatnot, like, there's just no outlet for it now. Like, all right, so that's a problem. Not your problem, a general problem. That the program or whatever it is needs to make sure it's giving you outlets. Like I said, the guy on the drums, if you drum for three, four hours, you go to a gym. You go, you do activities that channel that energy, or you find what you personal outlet, like for me, writing a book, being I creative. I exercise a ton. Like, listen, I yeah. want to be a soldier. I exercise a ton. I do it every day. I do it yeah. in the pub. So, what? I just, I don't know. It doesn't like. So, being a soldier is a tremendous channel of this energy, I think. Right. Like, I think it's actually a good thing that men, if they're not going to be able to control that area and their lifestyle, like a lot of my son's friends who are not, they're respecting him a lot who are not in the army, they're respecting him a lot because they see that he's become a mensch, you know? Like he's become responsible. Whereas they're still, some of them, and some of them are waking up, thank God, are still with the drug deals and the, and the one night stands and they're starting to look at him and say, wait a minute, like he's doing something that's supremely beneficial for our people. And that gives a lot of self-esteem and purpose, you know? So they're starting to look at that and be respecting it and understanding that that's, that's they want that on some level themselves. So yeah, you have to find the outlets. You have to figure out what it is to so channel that energy because once again, even in marriage, you're not going to just be able to when you want to get the outlet. It's going to have to be when she wants and you're going to have to do the moves and we're going to talk about that. The preparation to get her in a state where she'd want to connect with you. But the thing that she'll respect is you have that self-control. You respect that you're a true man. You're not like, uh, what's his name, Andrew Tate, animal, who claims he's a man. You're going to be a true man who's a master of himself. And that a woman truly respects someone who's mastered themselves. Like think about, think about your own family. Like when, when do your parents fight? When, bottom line, when the father is just not controlling himself. He's just lazy mood, angry, pissed off, takes it out on the family and then that's when all the fights. Or he's not focused, he's never around. Whatever, he's gambling, whatever it is. Whatever men do. And that's when it all starts to escalate. So we got, we got to realize that harmony in the house is very connected to this whole area of focus. And if we're like how living a secret lifestyle away from our, our, our person, like, well, we're not even secret about it. Some people nowadays, like, I don't know, there's this whole polyg polygamy thing and, it's like, like yeah, all this kind of stuff. Like, it's, they claim it's working. I don't see it working. And the true therapist will say the only way it will work, as well, how we began this whole class, is you have to bring that kind of energy you're looking for out there. You have to somehow find it in your marriage. You have to develop it, use tools. We'll talk about some of them. Be, be creative in your marriage. Don't be boring. Well, your wife, you're bored. You can't be bothered. No energy. Your soulmate, you can't be bothered with. But all the other women, you're ready. You're like fully dressed, fully in full like pimp mode. No, the, use that energy for, your, for the person who really deserves it. She's the one who really cares about you and will be loyal to you. Now, wh when do they not be loyal? When do they get messed up like we had before? Brother. Yeah, we had to have before where they're not really interested in us. Yeah. 
and they're just going from guy, guy to guy, and they become slutty, let's say the word, you know? they lose value for themselves. That's because they, they, they never experience real focus from any man. So they think the only way they're going to get it is through that way. That, they need like, help, and that's where they have other classes. They have their, their work to do. Our job is not to change them. Our job is to change us and attract a woman who's not going to need it from loads of places. She's going to be totally focused on you. That's what we want as well. Our ego wants that as a man. We want focus. Yeah, so it has to be some sort of mutual, you know, relationship. It can't just be like, it's all about what I want. Yeah, so we're going to discuss that more and more. That's going to be the coming sessions of how to get out ourselves a little bit. And it will help us. It will help me discussing it, honestly. And I wish everyone a beautiful Yom Kippur. Try and think about some of these deep ideas. The, the spiritual journey of Yom Kippur, the Kohen God or going to the holiest of holies is, is a hint to this whole intimate reality between us and, and God. It's a very, our religion is filled with constant hints of intimacy. Shir Hashim, the holiest to feel, it's all about intimacy. If you start to understand Judaism is filled between this relationship between man and woman. It's not t- trying to take you away from it, it's trying to give you the most enhanced, vitalized relationship between man and woman that there ever was. It's trying to bring us to the ultimate love. If you understand it's only there to help us bring more love to the world, it's not trying to, it's not scaring us, it's not all negative. It's trying to bring us to the ultimate focus and the ultimate love relationship. Then you've understood what Judaism is really about. It's a tremendous unification and love. And that's what we have to experience on Yom Kippur because we're, we're detoxing, de, um, we're doing a detox from all this stuff. Like, I have a friend who doesn't keep anything Judaism really, but Yom Kippur, yeah. And he's a big guy on online, he'll turn off his phone for a day. It's a big deal for him. And he's a big guy. He's a big guy in the AI world now, he had all the previous stories, what were, and he'll turn off his phone. It's one day to just completely detox and just be with spirituality and, and just connect to your soul and enjoy it. Try and enjoy it. Try and find while you're here the most out of these moments and, um, and it will bring a more fulfilled relationship and you won't feel the need for porn and you won't need, feel the need to degrade a woman. You'll respect them. You'll see how great they are and you won't need, the, you know, you won't need to have to go through ever another October the 7th because we're going to be in a whole elevated level. The world will see the truth of our people and we don't need to listen to anyone else in the world. We've got our special mission. We'll be respectful to them, but we're not going to have to be subservient to America or to anyone. We have our mission, and B'nai Akiva Lami is going to be one of those places which shine out that truth to the world. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.